I keep my watercolors uh, in the studio in mostly in drawers. Um, if I can reach down here, I can pull out and show you. Uh, the drawers are full of watercolors of all different sizes, mostly very small ones like that I'm showing you right here. Uh, but anyway, there's there's whole filing cabinets full of full of them. And over here, just to show you, uh, there's one I pulled for you to look at. That's uh, in Paris. Okay. I think it's a version of most of a show. And there's just all sorts of them. There's one I'm working on for a poem. And of course, we go to the big one that I did in the video on Paris and Venice. That's an elephant size. No, that's a, a smaller. But anyway, um, so just to give you an idea of how many of these little watercolors, like the kind we're going to work on today, I have. Um, here's more drawers, and um, here's one I did recently for an event in Tampa. Um, let's see. Oh gosh, here's some nice ones. Oh, here's a that's a cool little one I did, um, kind of very spontaneously. Down here are some larger ones that I really like. These are some of my favorite. Um, of all the ones I've sold and all the ones that have gone out, I still have probably a thousand here in the studio. Just to give you an idea. It's a transparent medium, okay, as opposed to acrylic, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but when you use watercolor, you want to have your white in your paper actually show through the transparency of the paint. I'm going to start by actually using a very wet technique. It's called you know, wet, wet watercolor. That sounds pretty funny, but I'm going to get my brush <clears throat> uh, full of water and I put water in all these trays just a little bit for each color. And I'm going to start with a red and I'm going to get my brush nice and saturated with a red color. And then what I'm going to do is just lay it on here. Ah, you see how beautiful that is? You see how the paper kind of comes through there? Uh, I'm going to do a couple of these and we're going to experiment with them. And you can see that the, it kind of puddles a little bit. And that's the nature of watercolor. It will do that. But you can use your brush very gently. You can spread it out, make it more even. Or if you want to make it very heavy at one end and lighter at the other, you can do that as well. You can get a little extra water there. You can thin this out, kind of tint it. Okay, you, you see that? You see what already, you're just getting the idea that this is a, a, a paint medium that has oh, hundreds and thousands and millions of possibilities. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you another technique. That's the wet watercolor technique. I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to take all the moisture that I can get out of the brush. Then I'm going to go back to the red and I'm going to lay this down here. Now, oh, that was really dry. It's called dry brush. Okay, now I need a little bit more water it's still going to be a dry brush, but here we go. Okay, you can see how, see how much lighter it is. What I'm getting is more proportionally, more of the paper coming through. This is important because the greater the transparency and the more that the paper actually comes through, the more alive your watercolor will be. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take the wet technique and go into the yellow. And we're gonna lay that, this is still wet, this wet technique. Let me put a big W here, okay? I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I need to get something a little bit heavier. Uh, hold that thought. And we'll take a marker, which dries very quickly. And I'll put W for wet. How's that? Okay. And this is going to dry brush. So we'll put a D there for dry brush. Okay, now I've got my yellow. I'm gonna put this into the wet watercolor. Woo! I mean, is that a beautiful red-orange? 
I mean, it's just gorgeous. And I'm gonna to try to do the same thing with a dry brush. Now, I'm gonna take, take the moisture, take, and I can take some of the color out there, but I'm gonna get, and now I'm gonna back with my yellow, and we'll do a dry brush. You see how different it is? In other words, if you look at this, it's a very, um, uh, how can I put it? It's very saturated. Here, you have more transparency because we're actually not covering all of the paper. We're letting some of it show through in the dry brush technique. Now, let's take another color. Let's take purple. Oh, yeah. And <clears throat> this is wet. I went into the water, got a wet brush, wet, wet purple. Oh, nice, huh? I mean, is this fun or what? Okay, do the same thing with the dry brush. I'm gonna take out that moisture. Go back into the purple. Uh, see this? See, see. Oh, isn't that nice? Totally different. Now, you can manipulate this in many, many ways with the brush. In other words, I could make this more solid with a dry brush. Okay. Uh, this is pretty solid here. I could control the drips if I want to kind of get that a little more even. And now what I'm going to do is something really interesting. I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to take every bit of moisture out of it that I can, okay? And I'm going to actually take a little bit of the color here off. I'm going to go right in the middle of the wet technique. And see what I'm doing? I'm pushing that water off. In fact, I'm going to take the paper towel and I'm going to go just where I put that over there, press down, and look how much of the color I've taken off. And I can go back in there with a brush. This, I'll tell you, this, this watercolor stuff is really wonderful. You can actually go in like this. And I'm going to go like that. I'm going to take all the moisture off. And you can see how much of the paint I actually took off. Well, we could do that. This is called blotting. Okay, and blotting is something that you can use a great deal in watercolor. I'm going to go down to this area where there's a big drip here. And that's okay. I mean, you might want that drip there. But if we don't, let's say we just go like this, very gently, and we can move that around, and we can have what's called a tint. A tint is when you have white added to a color, it makes the value uh, lighter. In other words, if you say value is a 1 to 10, 1 being bright white, 10 being deep black, then we would have maybe something like a 2 here, something like a 1 there. Uh, whereas the purple itself would be about maybe, hmm, what, a six or a seven? And if you follow what I'm trying to say here, well, that's another lesson. But anyway, uh, now we're going to go down to the dry brush. Now we're going to see, now this is dried proportionally much faster than this. I could get out a hair dryer and dry it totally, but we're not going to do that at this moment. But this, I can take my finger, I can feel it's still a little damp, but it's not wet like this is. And I'm going to take my, my brush, take some water. I'm going to see how much can I take off here. Okay, I'm going to blot it. Wow! I took off way more than I did with the wet technique because there wasn't as much pigment applied to the paper. And since it didn't really cover the paper as much, wow, look at this. Hey, I'm learning something. This is good. Okay, look at that. I really took a lot off. Now, you're not ever going to get as white a, uh, as light a value as you got with the original paper. We can do this. Um, the British uh, watercolorist in the 19th century, this was kind of a boondoggle for them. And they took a white opaque watercolor called Chinese white, and they would put their whites back in at the end. And to me, it always looked like pigeon poop. I'm sorry, but I'm, a ve I'm very much a purist when it comes to watercolor. So use the medium as it should be used, uh, I say. Well, I'm not an English, you know, 19th century watercolors. But uh, over here, let's, let's try this again. Let's try this with a dry brush. I wet the brush. I'm scrubbing. That's really what I'm doing is scrubbing. And I'm scrubbing this off so that we get, nope. Oh, cool. Okay. 
And you can go in there too. I mean, we could even wet the, the towel. Let's see, try this. Ah, look at that, look at that. I really scraped a lot off. I'm gonna go over the edge so you can see, you know, how much I actually took off. Okay, well, that's kind of like a quick introduction. And now next we're going to experiment with ink because we're going to combine ink and watercolor okay so just just hold the phone while i switch now of course you don't know um that i just took this outside in the bright florida sun and it's totally dry although you can see this one little wet spot kind of glistening uh i don't know if you can see that but anyway i now i want to work with this watercolor the, the techniques that we just experimented with and I'm going to uh, show you the only way you can get your white back at this point um, we, we scrubbed some off we got a value kind of like one and a half or two right there I guess I kind of wrote really I said one but one would be your absolute white um, and we saw how we got close here by actually blotting, by scrubbing with a brush and then blotting with a towel. But now what we're gonna do, that the watercolor is dry, we're gonna see if that works as easily. I'm gonna take a smaller brush. Uh, let's see, I want a real tiny one. Here, I'll take a real tiny flat. And I'm gonna go back into this. Let's just see if the scrubbing will take off as much when it's become dry. And that's really dry. You know, I'm not getting any paint. Um, Let's see, can we loosen it? Aha, yes, we're loosening it. Okay, and now we're gonna take our paper towel and let me get a dry, a real dry piece here. Okay, whoops. And yeah, well, we, we got, really, we got almost as much. Now, not, not quite as much because we had to do some manipulation, extra manipulation to get it off. It's like kind of scrubbing with, um, you know, your kitchen sink with vinegar. If you've got, a, got hard water, you know. Well, let's see, okay. Well, we took quite a bit off. Okay, now, this is the big difference between watercolor and acrylic. If that had been acrylic and it had dried, which has a plastic base, then we could not have taken anything off. Once, you, once acrylic dries, you cannot take it off. There is a solvent for it, which is alcohol, but, um, and you can, you can, you can take a lot off, but you can't do it with water. So we just did it with water. Now, that being explored and figured out, I'm going to take a razor blade. This is an X-Acto knife, and I'm not going to here where, where it's wet. I'm going to go over here and I'm actually going to scratch. Okay, now this, as I say, this is dry. But, you know, <clears throat> I could dry it even more. And this is what I sometimes do. Watercolor can become very dead unless there's enough uh, paper showing through. That's why I, I myself prefer dry brush uh, as opposed to the wet technique. I really don't do much with the wet technique because I'll show you what, what I, I end up doing. I end up taking uh, this, this is an X-Acto knife. It's got a sharp blade, and I'm going to actually scrape through the paper. Now, if you scrape too far, you go right through the paper, of course. But you see how I'm getting that white there? And this is what the British watercolorists failed to do. I do it all the time, uh, because sometimes I want it white there. And now, you see how much, how much more alive the color becomes? And I'm just going to put some white areas. Because I could not put white back into the watercolor. There is no such thing as white watercolor. I mean, it doesn't exist. And so, therefore, here, let me try it with the red. Okay. And I suppose you could use other things than an X-Acto knife. I've always found this very easy to use. And I've never gone beyond that. But... But I mean, and, and even if you just get little, little kind of like, do, 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 like that. See how, how that's more alive? It doesn't have this dead flat quality. 
Let's try it with a dry brush too. That'll be the same thing because this we added the color and it got pretty wet there. But let's go to where it's very dry here where we started. Let's just see if we can do that. Yep. Isn't that nice? And that way you get some of your white back because uh, without the white and the watercolor kind of existing, coexisting, uh, watercolors can be mm, not as beautiful, uh, not as sparkly. You know, even with oils and with acrylics, uh, at the very end to adjust all of your, your tonal range, that's when you put in your highlights, you know, with your white, your opaque white. Um, and that's what makes the silver look like silver. That's what makes the uh, diamond flash, that, you know, all of that. But, but in watercolor, you, you know, you have, to, you have to go right down to the paper to get that white back. And, or you left it. And I'm going to show you right here at the bottom how you can do that. You notice that in the dry brush, we left a lot of paper. And so that's pretty easy to do. But I'm just going to, let me pick another color this time. Let me pick um, uh, blue, okay. <laughs> Generic blue, okay. And I've got a little bit on here. See how I've, I've, left, I've left some white in there. And if I dry it out a little bit more, uh, too much. Okay. See, and then I won't have to scratch at it. But that has a very lively quality. Uh, compared to, let's just do this, like, you know, a lot of people would start, they would start with a the wet, and they would just go, yeah, 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 ah, uh, that's my blue, okay, um, nice, but this has a lot more life to it, so this is one of the tricks of watercolor, and starting right out, you know, from the beginning like this, you know, you won't fall into some of the traps, or some of the uh, problems that arise, when you're not really paying attention to what watercolor could do and all of a sudden you're going like yeah it looks like something i did when i was in grade school there's well, nothing wrong with that but what i mean is even if i take the blotter at this point here let me let me just i have to find a dry piece here okay uh i'm gonna just blot up this it gives a little variation see i mean that's much more alive than what was just there now, if I want to, I can take I'll take a little brush here, okay? And I'm going to take that blue, which I, I made a joke and call it generic blue, but let's take um, a little bit of green to it. A tiny bit. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. And you see how you can very subtly get that color shift from the blue into the green. And it, you know, it can be very unobtrusive. It can be very gentle. You can use your fingers if you want, okay? Uh, let's go down here with a dry brush and take some of that green. And I have enough water to get it on there, but. Ooh. <laughs> we're, we're in the ocean, this is great. I do love the ocean, okay. So you begin just, just by using, you know, Three colors is what we used. We used, well, we used four really. We used the red, and we used the yellow. We used a little bit of purple. Um, and then we found out we could blot the wet technique. We could blot even the dry technique. So that even after it's dry, you can lift the watercolor off the paper to a degree. Um, some people also, also have tried erasers. I have never tried that, but uh, only because an eraser, once it gets dirty, it actually brings dirt onto the paper. And the paper is very um, resilient. Paper is <laughs> much stronger than most people think. Uh, and good acid-free uh, paper, watercolor paper, uh, will last forever. It's, it's very strong. It's actually stronger than canvas um, in terms of longevity. And uh, Anyway, and the watercolor pigments today are very permanent, whereas many of them in the past were made of vegetable dyes, and the vegetable dyes are what are called fugitive, which means that they disappear uh, upon exposure to light over a long period of time, or sometimes even a short 
uh, time. But but today most of your pigments uh, are quite you know permanent, and you can see that on the label. And by the way, since this came up, a lot of people think, oh, it's more professional to use tubes than the pans. And here I've got some pans to show you. These are some really nice colors. They come in the very small pans. But but um, I prefer, at this point in my life, the cakes. And I went to that about maybe 10 or 20 years ago. Only because the tubes, when I didn't use them, would dry up. And then I would have spent a fortune on all these tubes that I couldn't get the caps off. And if I did get the caps off, it was all dried up inside. And then how do you get the color out with a brush? Because all you've got is a tiny little hole at the top of the tube. Um, whereas with acrylic, here I'll get a tube of acrylic. And we're going we're gonna to look at this. I'm going to compare acrylic with watercolor um, in section two. And I'm going to show you why acrylic and oil is so different from watercolor. It's sort of like people playing, like I do, the piano and the organ. The piano has keys, and so does the organ, but they're totally different instruments. The organ is essentially a wind instrument, and the piano, you know, is a string instrument. And this is the way it is with watercolor versus oils and acrylics. It's just totally its own beast, so to speak. Oh, we shouldn't call it a beast. Its own princess? I don't know. Whatever. Okay, folks, that's all for now. How about a short interlude called Alligator Alley? Um, so I'm going to show you some of these uh, techniques that we are exploring, and they're going to be alligator, little tiny alligator paintings. And uh, here we go with the first one, um, Picture of Alligators. And that's kind of a joke because I actually made it for somebody who called pictures pictures and it was pretty funny so somebody um, at a country club that we were having lunch with and, and um, became friends later of course but um, this this is for him and and here we have alligators uh, kind of tin pan alley uh, playing the piano these are all watercolors in the uh, kind of genre that you know I, I'm showing you in this video um, we also have an alligator consort, uh, concert, concert, concert here, um, in the garden. Um, and here they are out in the, uh, swamp. And, uh, this whole alligator series was a lot of fun. But, you know, I'm just showing it to you as kind of an intermission here before we go back to work. And, um, I could have done that with any number of subjects, but I thought you might like the alligators. So, see you later, alligator. No, we're going to get to work. Okay. Now, I think I've covered most of the things that I wanted to show you. Um, I could also show you that if you had tubes of watercolor, um, you could have actually squeezed the color out. And uh, you can use it almost thick as oil paints. But that's another thing that uh, I'm, I'm not going to deal with at this, at this point. But I'm going to switch to ink. Now, <clears throat> in ink, what I do is, as you saw in some of the work I showed you, of the thousands, literally thousands of little watercolors that I've done over a 40, 50 year period, that um, uh, the ink is sort of my drawing, if you will. And I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do with ink when you're drawing. Very often I take a pencil and I actually do something in pencil first to give me an idea of what I want to do. And I'm just going to make up a design. Uh, I'm going to make up something, let's see, I'm going to do something with maybe a vase. And I'm going to just, um, here. Let's see if you can see this, but there's a little vase here. It's got some dead flowers. And I think I'll work with that. So I'm going to take the um, shape of the vase and I'm going to kind of abstract it a little bit here. And very light lines, just to give me an idea of where I want to go on the paper. Um, and this can be erased. After everything's done, you can erase the pencil lines so you don't have to worry about it. 
but make them pretty light and then you won't have to erase so hard. But I'm going to put that dead bud right there and I really like the way that these, you know, it's not just awful. I have these beautiful floral things and then I, and then I just wait till they're dead. And then <laughs> my wife says I'm always painting dead flowers. But anyway, um, I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take the ink. Now this ink is, uh, in particular, it's FW ink made by Dale Rowney. It's acrylic, actually, it's an acrylic artist ink. And you shake it up real good because you want to get it so it's like all mixed together. I'm going to take off the top and there's different things you can do here. This is really fun. So I'm going to take my uh, water over here and I'm going to actually put water on the paper and I'm going to put it where I think I'm going to put my ink lines. You can see the pencil smearing a little bit. We're not going to worry about that. And sometimes what I do is I take my paper towel and just blot it a little bit. Okay. And then I take what is called a crow quill pen. Um, this has, you can actually has these nibs you can put in and see if I can find the box that has all the different ones. There's somewhere here. Oh well. I don't know what I did with them. Oh, here they are. Oh! It's across the table here. Um, these are different nibs and they're calligraphic, like for calligraphic pens. And there's your Pro Quill right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little tiny point. You can use a very broad one. Um, kind of, I just use the crow quill or a small one because this is a small piece of paper. And when I was larger, I often combine the watercolor with the ink uh, and acrylic and sometimes pastel. But I'm not going to show you that right now. I'm just going to work with the ink. So, Let's take that bottle away from there and give me a little more room so you can see. And I'm going to start kind of going over some of these lines with the ink pen. And you can see it's kind of like, oh, this is really fun. Um, the ink is like, you can, you can kind of sketch with it. It's, and, and that's the reason I wet the paper because it gives you just a little bit. Now, this, this vase has um, kind of patterns in it like this that kind of go like triangles. So I'm going to kind of like this. Okay. And, and if you want to, you can take your brush and at any point, if you want that ink to just be a little stronger, you add the water to it and you get this wonderful effect. Uh, you can kind of put me up like this one. Okay, and it's a little thicker down here, and just very loose, okay? And then, then you gotta start on your flowers here, your dried up flowers. And we're gonna take, okay, a little bit of red there. Now, the reason I'm using the acrylic, and you say, oh, why didn't he use India ink? Ha! Huh! Like the 19th century English watercolors. Well, they didn't. I don't really use uh, uh, that watercolor too much. But anyway, what happened with that is that just like the watercolor, when you use the India ink, uh, it will, when you re wet the paper, it will actually come off. I mean, it will, you know, dissolve again. And I don't want that because I want whatever I'm doing right here with the acrylic ink. I want it to stay that way because when it dries, I don't want it to go anywhere. I don't want it to pick up. I want it to stay where I'm putting it. And I'm going to use this as a basis, a kind of a line basis. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just um, figuring out how I want the uh, shapes, how I want them to kind of appear. And I can, I can go back into this when everything's dry. Uh, but I can't take it away. In other words, whatever I'm doing right now is going to stay there and it's not going to go anywhere. Even if I take the brush and let's just take some of those lines I was working with and I want to, let's see, see if I can use a little bit of water. 
whoops, don't put it in the ink for heaven's sakes. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna just kind of like, what I'm doing is I'm kind of balancing the darks and the lights on the paper here. And, you know, I'm not paying any attention to what's in front of me, really, because this is this is an abstraction, and it's, you know, got it, it's gonna be okay. And if you get too much anywhere, you can always take, by the way, this ink is really strong, so if it gets on your clothes or anything, forget it. Um, it's gonna stay there. Yeah. So, okay, that's not too bad. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, and because it's been so hot today, <laughs> almost 90, March, um, what I'm gonna do is, you know, it's the air conditioning's on here, and if you have areas that you wanna start working right away, you don't wanna get out your hair dryer, put in the sun, you can make a little tip like that, and you can actually uh, pick up some of the extra there's extra ink and you say, oh, I don't really want that big blob. You can move it down here somewhere, maybe, you know, on your paper towel. This is so fun. And um, there, that kind of gave that neck a little more definition. And maybe I want just a little bit of shadowy area here. So I can put a little shadow there. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so that's good. Now, um, or if you want to, too, you can use that old block technique and you can go over it like this and that'll help if you want to get it dried so you can do that. But we could take the hair dryer. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with watercolor. Okay. And let's see. That's kind of a greenish color. I kind of like that. So I'm going to take a little of that green. Real, real, okay. Uh, let's see, we could take a little bit of brown there. Uh, just a tiny bit. Yeah, that's kind of good. Okay, oh, that's nice. And get that kind of greenish look, which is kind of fun. Yeah, but keep it real simple, okay? And then I'm going to take uh, maybe add a little blue to it. Do the, the, the top there. Maybe add a little bit. Now see, I picked up some of the ink. <laughs> this could get too dark and it'd be out of hand. But anyway, we'll see. Okay. Um, so far, so good. Now, the whole thing is, you don't want to keep this fresh looking. You don't want to go and, and just do this so that it's, can I say, totally watercolored. Uh, we want to have some white left in our subject, uh, our positive area. Our negative area is really important though. So I'm going to pick contrasting colors and let's say that I want to make this something very, hmm, they're dead flowers, right? Maybe I want to make something kind of bright. Let me, let me get some of these kind of brownish colors, see what they do. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll take some of this. Okay, put a little brown there. Okay, a little bit there. See, I'm getting some of that dead look. Okay, and just kind of approximating what I'm seeing here. Uh, there's that brown again. A little brown there. A little bit of red. So I'll put some little red, and that red is kind of faded. So I'll put the next little brown with it. Uh, put a little bit in here. Yeah, okay. Put a little bit there. And maybe add a little bit of brown to the stems. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to keep it real, real simple. Okay, so that's pretty good. And you can go into this when it's drier if you want to. Remember, we have all the options of scratching, we have the option of blotting it, we have all that that we can do. But now I'm gonna do around, I'm gonna do the negative space around it. And I think very often what I do is I pick blues. I don't know why, but I'm gonna pick some blue. And I think I'm gonna just kind of start brushing this in very loose. I, I, I want the brush to do the work. I, I want it to just kind of, hint the fact that there's you know space around the flowers 
and pick up some of the shapes. This is why I like using a flat brush. Now, I'm being really careful not to touch what's already wet there on the paper because I don't want that to happen. Now, it, it's on a wooden base here. In other words, uh, we're looking at the wood and I'm gonna kind of just indicate this maybe with a little brown, kind of like that. That's kind of not really a dry brush, kind of a wet dry brush. And I think that's gonna work pretty well. And, and here's where I might just do a little blotting. Now I'm gonna leave this for a minute, uh, so don't go away, because I'm gonna dry it so I can do some more work on it. And for this, uh, I don't know if it'll reach. I'm gonna see if the hair dryer will reach over here. Hey, we got it pretty well dried. Dry enough to work on. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of look at it and say, huh, where do we need life? Now you see what has happened is the watercolor, it's very simple, but what's happening is that's kind of giving you dimension just by the fact that some of the watercolor is darker some of it's lighter, so it kind of pushes and pulls uh, into the paper. And um, now I'm probably gonna do, you know, I don't wanna ruin it, but I'm going to add some uh, kind of orangey tones. Let's see how this works. And I'm gonna go in there with a little bit of orange, and just very light. Okay, ooh, that's kind of fun. Okay. And that kind of ties in with some of those browns that I put in. Yeah, you know, just kind of like a pattern here. And uh, let's see, what do we need? Um, I might want to make the vase just a little bit darker, so I'm going to bring some of this in. Remember, it's that kind of uh, give it a pattern. Mm, you know, it's kind of fun. Okay, and you know, in the glass there. And maybe up here at the top, might be a little too green. Okay, well, I get an idea. Yes. Okay. Um, now let's see. I also like to use a little bit of pink sometimes. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. I think maybe I'm going to make a little, a few spots uh, in the flowers here. There is some deep reds. See if I can kind of heighten those just a little bit. Give the idea of what's in the flowers here. A little red there. And maybe a little bit more brown out where these little flummy whiskers come out. Something like that. We kind of get the idea. Um, but keep it really loose and keep it really fun. And don't be in a hurry like I am right now. Um, let it dry, use your hair dryer, think about it, um, and if you see areas that really need to be a little darker, like maybe your shadows in here, you want it a little more dramatic, you do that, a little too much, just blot it, okay, oh, that's better, and then you say, oh, I want my area around it to be a little deeper, maybe we'll even bring in some purples here a little bit, let's see. I could really ruin this, couldn't I? But don't worry about it. You know, it's, <laughs> I mean, that's why it's fun to work with little things because, you know, you don't feel, oh, that kind of brought the vase out, didn't it? That's good, so it kind of, yeah, see? I took some of the white out. When you take the white out, things go back. They recede. And that kind of gives you an idea of how I did the watercolors, the little ones I'm showing you. And of course, eventually, you'll sign it, too. And when you sign it with the acrylic ink, um, it's very easy, let's see, because, and it's not going to fade, ever! Did you know that in prints, they generally sign a pencil, because the sunlight will not affect it, but this is really like solid carbon, and, okay, hardest part of the painting is to sign it, right? Okay, well, there you go, and, um, that's just a really simple little thing, but, but remember, you can always sketch this stuff out, and you don't even see the pencil lines I did. But if you did and you didn't want them there, when this is totally dry, just erase them. Don't use a pencil eraser. And use a good eraser like, um, oh yeah, I've got tons of erasers here. But just use an art eraser or something that, you know, won't leave marks. 
And that's it for, for now. You can add to this now pastel. You could add acrylic, um, but that's in another lesson entirely. And I will address that uh, in another video. So thanks for being with me and um, give it a try. See what you can do. This is fun. Of course, all the time that this was this was going on, um, I didn't show you the flowers. <laughs> so there's our vase, there's our flowers, and which is more exciting? I like the watercolor better. And remember that it's only an approximation. Um, you're not doing, uh, you're not recreating the vase. You're not cre recreating the dead flowers. You're making an original creation and that's inspired by that. And so that's why you need to have this freedom, this looseness, uh, this spontaneity, and yet with the discipline of the technique uh, that watercolor requires. So it's kind of a combination, you know, it's sort of um, like being athletic, um, but also, you know, playing within the rules of the game. So, uh, just a footnote there, and um, thanks again. Uh, really enjoyed having you uh, as a guest in the studio. Okay, good luck. Bye.